Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are planting the first of this year's annuals in the ground, which makes me very excited. We do have a couple of nights in the high 30s coming up, but both of these plants should be okay. Um, I do have a few annuals in containers already, including sweet potato vine, which is very cold, tender, and they're doing fine so far. So I think that we're safe uh, to start planting these. So I've got two different types of pink blooming annual here. One of which, this one right here, these are the Sun Patience Compact Blush Pink, which can handle full to part sun. All of those are gonna be going in this area around our Persephone statue. So I planted these last year on the north side of our chicken coop and they did so phenomenally well that I thought I've gotta try these in a larger scale, like a larger area. So that is all we're gonna be planting in this area. I did plan on putting a Sun Patience White impatient in along with the pink, but I'm gonna take a page out of Aaron's book and do fewer plants in this area and just let them grow and fill in because one of these will get anywhere between like 16 and 30 inches, I think. Yeah, 16 to 30 inches tall, 12 to 24 inches wide. That is a huge annual. So what I'm gonna do is we are going to place all of these around, kind of just divvy them up. I've got 60 of them total for these four areas and then we're gonna get them planted and yeah, let's do it. got them all in the ground it's so fun to see something happening up here I mean it doesn't look like too much today this is kind of our before shot but I'm hoping that by even mid-season it'll be this spectacular show of color I mean based on how they did for me last year I'm very hopeful this is kind of a tricky area though we've tried multiple different things throughout the past several years uh, super tunias we've done super bina sparkling amethyst last year I've seeded lettuce in here in the spring that was really fun I've done pansies up here I can't remember all the things but the thing about it is you can see we've got these two locust trees here they're just barely starting to leaf out. So at this point in the season, they get tons of light, the plants do, underneath. But of course, as the leaves get a thicker leaf canopy, far less light reaches these flower beds, especially these two back quadrants right here. These get some afternoon sun. So it's very tricky if you're wanting to do all the same type of plant to find something that can handle both the amount of shade that the back ones get and the amount of sun that these get and kind of look the same. We've had fair luck through the years, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how these sun patients handle it. These are also the only flower beds, I think on our entire property that get overhead water uh, because this is, seems like almost an impossible area to try to get the grass sprinklers to not hit these flower beds. I mean, cause it's like, it's very uneven <laughs> really. You know, we've got trees in the way. There's like thicker grass here. It gets thinner along the front and the back. It's just an odd space. So the flower beds receive whatever water the grass is getting. So some things react better to that than others. So this will be an experiment. We'll see how it goes. The next area we are gonna plant up today is underneath the red point maple trees along the west side of our property. So let's head that direction. This is what we're planting over here on the west side. A whole bunch of these surefire rose begonias. They are such beautiful plants. And I mean, you can see how well they perform. At this stage, this early in the game, they look amazing. And what they'll do is they'll just keep growing bigger and bigger with more and more blooms all the way through a light frost. And they'll just be in color the entire season. The reason I decided to go with these for this particular area is because this spot is also interesting. When we initially planted it, all these trees were small. They were baby trees, baby boxwoods. The whole area was full sun. And you can see we're starting to get a little bit more shade in here, which is awesome. And I mean, these leaves are just babies too right now. They will, as the tree, you know, wakes up more and more, it'll be a little bit more of a dense 
canopy providing more shade for this area, but then the front will still probably receive quite a bit of sun. And then this part will receive more sun in the afternoon. It's just kind of a weird area. So we needed something like these that can go from full sun to full shade, anywhere in between and still perform. I think it's gonna be a really pretty look. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention that I forgot to earlier was how we're planting these. So you know we use augers to plant everything. Uh, but last spring, we kind of discovered this size. This is a power planter auger. I mean, we had it, but I didn't really appreciate this size for what it does for me, especially when we're doing a whole bunch of annuals. I don't have to bend over. I, t I tend to like to do assembly line planting just to make it as efficient as possible and it's uh, less bending. So I usually place everything where I want it and then I can come along and I just kind of tap the can and tip it over <laughs> out of the way. And then I can just pop my, all my holes in the ground without bending over. Um, and it's like up there, I didn't even break a sweat. It was just a very pleasant uh, time. Now we have a, what is this, a 20 volt DeWalt drill. You do want to make sure like get a handle for it because it'll give you more stability. Um, you do want to, you know, have a tight grip on it because I have heard of some people hurting themselves with drills and augers and things. So just make sure you feel comfortable with it. Anyway, the other thing we've got is the Biotone starter fertilizer. So I lay the plants out, make my holes, go along with a uh, starter fertilizer, do all that at once. And then I go along and plant everything. Pretty seamless process. I think that whole thing up there took me what, like 10, 15 minutes to do from start to finish. Maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> was one flat short. So the very last red point maple only has a few around it. So I will fill in those gaps as soon as I can get my hands on a few more. Hopefully I can. Otherwise I'm going to be digging some of these up and popping them down there. But I think they turned out so pretty. It's going to be so fun to watch these grow and fill in and just be a bright pop of color right here. There's already drip in this area. So if I dig around in here, uh, yep, right there. You can see there's a drip tube right there underneath the mulch and there are like four I think in here one two three maybe just three uh, But it's enough for all of these to uh, receive the water that they need They won't get overhead water, which will be nice. So there shouldn't be any spotting on their leaves um, Anyway, this has just been a really fun area We've got the urns yet to plant and I've been slowly working on putting in perennials and roses and things like that in the flower beds in this space I just am having a really good time with it. So anyway, that is it for today's projects. We have a whole bunch more coming your way. So prepare yourselves. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.